Hi, this is Jordan. This month's XDA Developer TV is brought to you by the Samsung Smart App Challenge 2012. Enter for your chance to win your piece of over $4 million in cash prizes by clicking the banner at the top of xdadevelopers.com or by visiting developer.samsung.com. It's Friday, June 8th, 2012. My shirt is a lot shinier than I thought it was going to be on camera, and this is the weekly recap. The first story I found particularly interesting on the XDA site this week was a story involving Microsoft and Android, or more specifically, Microsoft on Android. Now, as you can probably guess, in most cases, Microsoft is very anti-Android. They've gone out of their way to try to ban Android-based devices from actually entering the country in the past. So to see them doing something on Android is out of the ordinary, to say the least. However, it became public knowledge this week that Microsoft is developing something they're calling OnX, which is essentially a scheduling, scripting, task kind of app for Android that is web-based and has an Android client component. So you go to their website, you fill out some information about what you want to happen and what sort of events you want to trigger these things, and then you push it to your device, your device runs it, uh, the problem with all of this, of course, it connects only through Facebook. You have to use your Facebook authentication to get into it. So uh, going back a few weeks, you probably remember there was a Facebook SDK vulnerability on Android. So there are a lot of people that are not real happy about this at the moment. But I'm sure they will implement other authentication methods in the future. Just a matter of time. But one way or another, like I said, you put it in on the website, you push it to your device, and then when something happens, for example, if it detects that you're running, it will start playing certain music if you have a, a task that will do that for you. You could have it send you a notification if the weather's changing, uh, make sure to take an umbrella with you, it looks like it's gonna rain, something like that. You could have it set to remind you to pick up your kid after you get off work, or to call your wife to let her know that you're gonna be home late if it happens to be after a certain hour and you haven't left work. No, these totally don't have anything to do with my personal life, shut up. I've got to say, this looks really, really cool, and I do want to try it out. I do have qualms about the idea that it is a Microsoft product running on Android. It makes me think that there's something fishy going on behind the scenes, specifically that it is Android only at this point. I mean, why would Microsoft be developing something that's Android only? If you have any thoughts on the subject you'd like to share, definitely let us know down in the comments. And from the looks of it, there are already some Android applications that do some similar things. There's one called Tasker that is completely Android-based. You do everything from your device. You don't have to go through a third-party website or anything. But I believe that the website, the Microsoft website, is a little bit easier, at least in terms of the end user, and possibly in terms of developers and integrating with other apps in the future. And actually, speaking of developing, since this is the XDA Developer site and XDA Developer TV, another excellent tutorial was posted on the forum this week with some intro to Android programming stuff. Basically just walks you through setting up the Eclipse SDK, making it work with Android applications, and writing a Hello World application. So again, if you have not started developing for Android yet and you're interested, go take a look at this thread, look at any of the videos we've been posting over the last couple of weeks, the other tutorials that I've linked to. There's been a lot of entry-level developer stuff coming lately, and there's going to be a lot more in the near future. I've got a feeling. Now, the next four stories I'm going to kind of lump into one thing, and I'm going to call it the Chainfire block, because XDA Elite Recognized Developer Chainfire has just been on a roll lately, especially when it comes to the Samsung Galaxy S3 and other Samsung-based devices. Chainfire started off this week by completing the unofficial port of Clockwork Mod for the Galaxy S3. He quickly followed it up by releasing CF Root for the International Galaxy S3 i9300. He updated his Triangle Away application to work with the Galaxy S3 and the International Note. Triangle Away, if you're not familiar with it, is an app that helps you with kernel flash counters. If you flash ROMs on your device one too many times and you're about to lose your warranty, you might want to take a look at Triangle Away because it should keep you from doing that. It should reset the counter for you, I believe. And Chainfire wrapped up his week by updating Mobile Odin to support the Galaxy S3 as well. Again, if you're not familiar with it, Mobile Odin basically allows you to flash stuff onto your device from the device itself without actually having to have any PC interaction. Although I will say from the article, it says you practically don't have to have a connection to the computer, so at some point you will have to connect to it. But it does make everything a little bit more self-contained, although not entirely. So one way or another, Chainfire had an amazing week. We do have to applaud him for all of his hard work, so thank you very much for that. In other hacking and development type news, this week XDA senior member Rigal Linad brought out an automated root method for the HTC Evo 4G LTE. It actually does the device unlock through htcdevs.com for you. It flashes twerp recovery for you 
you, put super user and busy box on the device. According to the article, it basically does everything but make bacon for you. Now when you developers come up with something that will make bacon for you from your device, you will have a multi-gozillion dollar idea right there. In other rooting news, this week XDA senior member Overload and XDA forum member Panic Co. came out with some Sony related roots, specifically for the Sony Xperia Pro, Arc, and Arc S on Android 4.0.4. So if you have any of those devices and you're running that version of code, definitely take a look at one of their threads just to see if you're interested in trying to root it and get all that stuff working for you. And since we're speaking of Sony devices, this week XDA recognized developer Doomlord Doom brought out some kernels for a couple of Sony devices, specifically the Sony Xperia Sola, the Sony Xperia U and P, and those kernels automatically root the devices. Additionally, XDA senior member CrabApple2548 released custom ROMs based upon those kernels for those three devices. It's definitely not a quick one-time flash kind of thing and you're done, but if you have these devices and you're interested in seeing them rooted and getting a custom ROM on top of them, this is definitely a good way to look. Finally, I'll remind you I put out a video just a couple of days ago called Learn to Use Linux for Mobile Development. Basically just a couple of quick commands from the Linux terminal, some very easy beginner level stuff that we're going to build upon in the coming weeks in our upcoming pro tips and upcoming Linux tutorials and Android tutorials. So if you haven't seen that already and you're interested in some very basic Linux terminal usage information, go ahead and check that video out. Otherwise, that's all the news that I have for you this week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you on Monday.